ego, my lack of empathy, they're all left. My blinders have been taken away. I'm starting to see everything. As I was sitting there holding this guy, the guy came up and said, there's a storm coming, we need to get back across the river. So passing around, the craftsman that was with us, Brian Brown, he said, Dave, why don't you pray for this guy? Sure, man. I'm the prayer dude. I would pray for anybody. But as soon as Brian got that out of his mouth, And as I'm looking at this, 
this something happened. I looked at this, guys, and I never felt so hopeless alive. I'm looking at this, and I'm screaming in my mind. I'm not saying this out loud, but I'm saying, this is hopeless. There is no way anybody can ever fix this. This is a small country, and it's devastating in on itself. Nobody can fix this. I'm screaming out of my mind. But then something happened. I felt something leave me, and I heard God's voice like I've never heard before. And no, I didn't hear this voice from, from heaven say, Dave. I did not hear a voice, but guys, I can't describe it unless you experience that yourself. I can't describe the voice I heard, but I heard it loud and clear. And it was God saying this, Dave, that's my problem. Don't worry about it. All I'm asking you is to do your part. And when that happened, my sense of hopelessness left. This feeling of reassurance came back, and that's why I'm here today. That changed my life forever, guys. And that's the message I want you guys to get today. There's a whole bunch of junk going on in this world. There's stuff going on in this school, in this community. And not one of you can fix all of them. Not one of them. There's only one person that can fix that, and that's Father God. And he's got a plan. The Bible says so. He got a plan. And you know what? I was sharing with Mr. Smith, I believe it was yesterday. God can, God can fix this. He ain't wiggle his nose or do, you know, flick his heels or snaps and fix it. But if he did that, why would we need to be here? We are here, folks, because we are his servants. He put us here. He knew when he made us. He knew us before we were put in our mom's womb. He knew us, and he had a plan for us. And that plan was to do your part. Not fix the whole world, because that's a good problem. You need to do your part. Well, my life changed after that. And you know what? This is very good right. It did change for the good. You know, it was scary when she said that. I was scared. And when I sit here and tell you that, you know, make butterflies turn in your stomach. But I'm, I'm here to tell you right now, guys. Oh, golly. Is it a good change? It changes everything about how you look at people and how you look at things. Well, again, you know, I gotta get a drink of water, I got a little cold last night or science infection. Did I mess that up, Mr. Smith? Are you okay? Cool. I have a little more before. Is this cool? I can talk with my hands and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, guys, that's why I'm here today. I know I'm going over and I'll try to talk fast, Mr. Smith. I promise. I want your life to be that of Jesus. I want Jesus to in your life. You know, Jesus did not come here to be served at, at, all over the school. He came here to serve. And you know what? He's a man. He didn't have to come here to do anything. People should have been waiting on him hand and foot. He's the Messiah. But what did he do? He served us. He served us sinners. He served a prostitute. He served drunks. He served murderers. Isn't that crazy? We're church folks. We want people to come to church. In our clothes, our nice clothes. Dressed up. But going out and finding a murderer? That right there tells you it's open, you guys. If you ever question that you sense where you can't you can't be forgiven, well, guess what? God forgave you really bad evil through Jesus Christ. Let me be honest here. What are you guys good for by God? You know, go to church. How many of us here dress up on Sunday morning, sometimes Sunday evening, even Wednesday morning or afternoon or evening, 
We dress up to go to church to be fed the word. Fed the word of God. We leave their man. Man, the preacher was so good. The answer was so good. Is that what God wants? Is that what God created us for? You know, you're not going to get any extra points, guys, for going to church every Sunday or Wednesday. You're not going to get extra points for coming to a Christian school. Yes, it's important. Don't let me downplay that. We need to be in church. You guys are in the perfect spot right here. We need to be here. God has put you here. And we need to be servants. But too many Christians now are turning people off. You saw the video. They're turning people away because they won't allow them in their church because they got fighting clothes on. They stink. They're drunk. They're high on cocaine. They're high on methamphetamines or heroin. They won't let them in the door. They call the police to come remove them. That's crazy. That's not what being a servant of Jesus is about. It's opening the doors and letting people in, regardless of how they look, how they dress. You can go to church dressed up. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, you can argue it's respecting God. But God says, come as you are to worship. He didn't say, come dressed up in a suit and tie so everybody can see you, so you can be like a Pharisee. That's what the Pharisees did. They played the play. They walked up. They walked the walk. And, and, you know, or they talk and talk, but they didn't walk the walk. They wanted to look good. Man, they could quote scripture. But they wanted to look good. But that's not what God wanted to do. That's not what God wanted. God wants you to walk the walk. We've done enough of talking to talk. It's time to walk the walk. That's what Jesus did. He walked the walk. So how do we start changing our lives? Changing that image that's been cast upon Christians. I believe the answer is simple, guys. I'm trying to speed up here. God wants us to glorify Him by serving here on this earth. In closing today, this is what I'm asking each and every one of you guys to do the teachers, the staff, the visitors. It's time as we Christians to start what we look like. It's time to get spirits in here and get out and start being like Jesus instead of looking. Like a church goes, or looking like a Christian. Guys, you don't realize how blessed you are to be in a school. I'm telling you that right now, you don't realize how blessed you are. I'm telling you, in the public school system, they didn't have praise and worship at 10 o'clock this morning. I guarantee it. They are such under, under such forces, evil forces in public schools. There's good followers of Christ there. But they are so, under such evil forces, guys. The biggest is, is they don't allow God in school. You don't realize how fortunate you are to be here. I'm going to jump ahead here a little bit, guys, so I can get more. Get you guys back to class. I don't want you to miss too much class. You guys got homework to do, don't you? It's not fun. 